sorry, I'm embarrassed. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, don't be. It's let's talk it name. Don't okay. be. <laughs> are you talking about the wonderful weather that we are experiencing so yes, guys up. as we are about to start you know how we start our weekly sessions here we go Nats, we're not hearing anything here. Not hearing Nats, Nats. Nats hearing you. You are alone hearing and enjoying it. <laughs> Let me start over again. And I'm here getting all excited. Listen, every time I hear that song, I get so excited. And I, can't, I have to do it over. Same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. The Pinky and the Brain. Yes, Pinky and the Brain. Yes, let's talk, family. Same thing we do every Sunday night. We try to take over the world. So for those who usually log on to Facebook. I'm a sorry. My computer is not giving me the wonderful privilege to do so. Um, I would love to do so, um, as I am aware that there are persons who are not as keen as um, signing on to Zoom. And so they do sign on to the Facebook platform. And I believe that once I'm hit, finished here, um, you'll be able to upload from the cloud, from the Zoom cloud to Facebook. Um, but thank you. Thank you for being here with me. I always say this. Could be anywhere, doing something else, but you chose to be on this platform with me and I'm grateful. So you would have realized that I do not have a presenter this week. And that is for a reason. I must say thank you so much to everyone who checked in and asked if I was okay. I am okay. I, as my best friend would say, she don't think I didn't have no COVID. I don't think so either. But um, I haven't gotten my release as yet. However, I don't think I have. I'm, that 14 day, I think I've passed 14, almost into 21. And God has been good. And I am grateful, extremely, 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 extremely grateful um, to the Lord for what has happened um, during that period. And so um, in seeking the Lord for Let's Talk, I, if you realize that once we had finished the media, dealing with media and communication, I kind of pull back a little bit to kind of put things into perspective because sometimes you can just be going, 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 going and not realizing that you have to kind of pull back a little bit and kind of put some things into perspective as we move forward on just understanding this whole kingdom thing, understanding who we are um, in the kingdom, the role that we play. And so in light of this, I 
was seeking the Lord and he said, put things into perspective. And I believe that that one of the week, the week before I found out that I had COVID, I was talking about life happens. <laughs> and when life happens, you know, how we're supposed to be behaving when life happens. And um, a lot of things were said that week. Um, after that, it was we had to postpone and then Pastor Dino spoke last week and it was a very interesting conversation last week and we spoke about some stuff that we kind of build memorial sites around, you know, the book of Acts and Pentecost and I think for some persons they, they got context that, you know, that church was basically a baby church, a new church and we build our foundations or we expound we, we we desire so much um acts and that was a baby church you know what does a mature church looks like and so we had a very riveting conversation and i think we ended on a good note and we're continuing this week on putting things into perspective and so guys you have to understand that when i speak on next talk or anyone speak, most of the times we are learning along with our viewership. And for me tonight, I just want to say to you that I am learning. This, this experience has been a serious learning experience for me and a challenging one too as well because you talk and you have to know back what you say. And that sometimes poses a challenge because change is never easy change takes a lot change moves you from one place to the next you know that level of comfort that comfort zone that area that you can just be comfortable in it it, it causes a lot of things to happen it causes ants nest to dig up it causes exposure um and exposure to just who you are just some of the stuff that you are willing to accept and the demand you now that's being placed on you. I believe this kingdom message has just placed a serious demand. And so my wonderful husband is here. Hi there. Hi. <laughs> um, just, just to mention you, 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 I was just thinking, um, having close off on, on what we spoke about, the whole, as you, you mentioned, we put in context the book of Acts and that it was a baby church. And um, just want to clarify that we're not necessarily like trying to push it aside um, any at all. It's just, again, context to say um, what we desire from Acts. Um, it should be that, well, all of us had to go through that baby stage, put it that way, right? So. Access the baby stage, so we have to go through those experiences. So we cannot force ourselves in maturity. We have to start there. It's just that many of us look at Acts as the end, and Acts was just the beginning. And, and that's what we want to bring clarity on. So, you know, um, it's crazy to think that, hey, let's not read Acts because Acts is just a, no. We have to go through that. But the fact that this is not the end, um, this is just the beginning. And it's so glorious, so we should be really super excited about what God is going to do as he matures us um, as his children. Thank you, there. So tonight, Let's Talk Family, I want us to really talk. Um, I really want um, tonight to be quite interactive. Um, many things have happened for a lot of persons, not necessarily because of let's talk but life on a whole things have changed things have propelled um a lot of things are happening for persons and for individuals and in seeking the lord about what is it that you know i i needed to discuss this tonight he said understanding your kingdom influence I know I've been saying, on, um, we've been using the word kingdom a lot, and I don't want it to become a cliche. I don't want it to take on that note, but I want us to always remember that kingdom has a meaning and a definition 
and it plays a role in our lives. And influence, kingdom influence, I know when people think of influence, they think of uh, having, being a supervisor, having someone beneath them to influence them. You know, um, someone submitted to them. And influence takes on so many different tones. And I am, it may sound a little bit like a Bible study, but I, I have a husband and I have a best friend that I don't take their words for granted. Most of the times when we say, okay, you know, as in John 2, most of us don't really take up a Bible and look upon John 2. We just say, we trust Chris, say John 2. And we trust whosoever, say John 2. And we trust Natalie, say John 2. She had talk about. And we don't stop to explore. And I, I, I want you to understand that Let's Talk is about pushing you to start reading the word of God, start researching. I do not know um, Hebrew. That's how I got there. I do not know Hebrew and Greek as yet. However, in preparing this, my prelude is that and I wrote it down, the Holy Spirit, you know, is, I have a great relationship with the Lord, as I believe everyone else here on the platform does. And the Spirit of the Lord said to me, Natalie, what you're about to do is reading comprehension. You know, when you read something and you just analyze it based on a surface level. However, he said that you are reading it through a different eye. And the eye that you're reading it through is now having so much discussion about kingdom we're searching about kingdom. And so as a result of that, let's start. So if you have your Bible, if you don't have your Bible, I'm going to share my screen. And we're going to talk about kingdom influence. And I may take it from a very basic level, but I know that the Spirit of the Lord is with us on this um, platform. And so if you get a revelation that I never pick up on, the beauty of it is that we are a community. Open your mics and share. Let, let's talk. Let's talk. Not let's stay silent. So the first thing that, um, and I'm not sure if persons are familiar with this scripture, um, it's 1 Kings 18, and I'll be going 1 Kings 18 to 19. So 1 Kings 18, and I want you to read. If you have the opportunity to read it, me while I'm speaking, that's fine. So this is the NIV version, and it speaks about, let's start at verse, let's start at verse 1. After a long time in the third year, the word of the Lord came to Elijah. Go and present yourself to Ahab. And we know that Ahab was the king at that time. And I will send rain on the land. At that time, rain wouldn't have fell in the area for like around three years. So Elijah went to present himself to Ahab. No, the famine was severe in Samaria. And Ahab had summoned Obedel. Obedel, his palace administrator. And I want to talk about Obedeah a little bit. So Obedeah was a devoted believer of the Lord. And Obedeah was the person who, you can read me while I speak, <clears throat> Obedeah would have been the person who, okay, someone says they're not hearing me. Anybody, everybody hearing me now? Or that's a long time thing. You hearing me, Chris? Yes, I'm hearing you. Okay, good. Thanks. So, um, Obedeah was the palace administrator. Now, if you read between three to six, you would realize that one, he believed in the Lord and he saved a hundred prophets. He hid them in two caves, 50-50 each, and he not just provided them safe, safety, he also supplied them with food and water. Now, if I should bring Obedeah back into our 
in this day and age, in our society, over there would be a top official in government. And he would have had access, and his access is not normal. So if I should even bring it back to this day and age, he would be like a permanent secretary. Um, because if you realize, Ahab gave him instructions that they kind of split up the area and he told Obadiah to go to a particular section and he would go to a particular section. So he had the king's ear. He, the king would have trusted him. Um, he sat in a position of government and he had a job. No, I mean, the scriptures are the scriptures, but as I said, this is basic reading comprehension. I didn't see anywhere here that it said that, you know, the spirit of the Lord or an angel appeared to Obidel and told him to go and save the hundred. Obidel would have had access to information to know that Jezebel was killing off God's prophets during that time. And out of his capacity, and when we say the capacity, somebody saying something? Okay, so out of his capacity, Obidel, and the fact that he would have had information that the normal man would not have had, and maybe here Jezebel or Kosana go on bad, and Ahab comes say, boy, you know, say my wife, the queen really, you know, something wrong with our school upstairs, and she really not like the prophet of the Lord, and she trying to get rid of them because their influence are too strong, and the people listen to the prophets. So Jezebel was on her hunt and she was basically killing off all the prophets at that time. And he hid those hundred. He not just hid them, he fed them. So he used his resources, his money. Um, he uses his skill, his know-how because he would have access to kind of the terrain, understand how the terrain operates. And he saved a hundred of God's prophets. So he used his influence that he would have in the capacity that he held as a palace administrator to save God's people. You good on that? Everybody good on that? Yes. Listen to me, let's talk. We need to talk. We no can unmute in the mic. We's not strangers in here. Hold on. I don't know if I have any strangers. No, I don't see any strangers. <laughs> Other than those who don't name themselves, I don't have any strangers. <laughs> right, so... <clears throat> Chris, you can please keep abreast of the chat because I am using the the um I'm sharing my screen. I can't okay. um readily see what's happening in the chat. And and so I just want you to take note of Obidale. I want you to take note too of the fact that if you scroll down further or if you read further. It will kind of give you a conversation between Obidare and Elijah. Now Elijah, but you know, Obidare runs into Elijah and Elijah says to him, hey, tell the king, you know, that I'll meet with him. And I find this conversation very, very hilarious. And I hope you find it as hilarious as I do. Now he says, what on God's earth could have caused this for me now, Lord. Lord, after me now, I do your hundred. And I feed them. What in the name of Jesus could have caused this for me? You know when God gave a word for give somebody, and you say, a woman could have done, a woman, a woman, when God gave an instruction, and the instruction is going to take you out of your elements, you say, God, I, 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 what could have caused this? A true, what really could have caused this? This is just how I see now, over there. 
He says, what have I done wrong? Asks Obadiah that you are handing your servant over to Ahab to, to be put to death. As surely as the Lord or God lives, there is not a nation or a kingdom where my master has not sent someone to look for you. So they them will look for Elijah for dunning. And he further went on to say, but now you tell me to go to my master and say, Elijah is here. I don't know where the spirit of the Lord may carry you when I leave you. No, I, I crack up right there, sir, because clearly back in those days, when somebody said, them see Elijah downtown, by the time them go downtown, Nice. Them don't know how, where, are when, but Elijah reached a Clarendon. Mm -hmm. This is good. And someone is saying something? No, go um, ahead, Nance, go ahead. That him reach a Clarendon. By the time them call the mayor Clarendon, the mayor Clarendon say, yeah, we heard that he was in Maypen. And by the time them reach Maypen, them here say, Elijah reached a Mobile. By the time we reach a Mobile, them here say me from Mobile, I reach a Cuba. Them can't, them can't, them can't catch it. And now all of a sudden, the man appear out of nowhere. And say, I tell you, have someone there. And the fact, the thing about Obede is that he would have known how much anger and fury and rage the king and the queen would have towards Elijah. Nevertheless, that never deterred him. It wasn't until Elijah made him the promise that, listen, I'm not going to do the vanishing act. And it's not just the vanishing act, but I want us to stop and just look at verse 12 a little bit different. And, 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 and I, just, I just wondered right there and then, and this is just Natalie, it says, I don't know where the spirit of the Lord may carry you. The spirit of the Lord may carry you. So, Chris, can you please use the word for me? It's transcend, translate. Translate, yeah. Translate, thank you. So, before Philip was translating, Isaac, Elijah was translating too. Before they get caught up, some translation did I go on right here, so, because... Obedea had information that the normal man would not have had. And it further went on and he spoke and he said, sure, go on. I'll go tell the king that, hey, you're here. Now in the back of his mind, remember, Sam still had 100 of God's prophets through this time. My question to us before I move on is how do you view your influence right now? What you have? Stop, look at what your job is, look at what you're doing. How do you view your influence right now? What it is do you believe without the Lord giving you a prophetic word or an instruction, what do you believe you can be doing right now to advance his kingdom? In this day and age, in this time, if there's anybody that wants to chime in, if you think that you're doing it, uh, hello, hey Navarro, hey Natalie. All right, good evening um, to all, let's talk, Zoomers. All right, um, I think I relate to that question. For me, it's not really so much within the job function itself. Mm -hmm. It's just using um, what you do as an opportunity, as you said, you know, to advance God's kingdom. Uh, for example, I had an encounter with a young man just last I think it was last week, he came to open an account with us. And he was actually the last customer that I had for the day. 
um, right after we closed. He came in like probably about four minutes or so before we closed, came to open his account and um, they sent him to me to open the account. So upon seeing this guy, you know, I mean, it's easy for you to use your natural eye and look at him and, you know, probably, you know, feel like That's something, something not up, yeah, something not up with him, you know, you just look rugged and, you know, just look like one of them road boy that way, you know, in face, cut up and thing and, you know, him have on the mask, you just look suspicious up away. But as he sat there with me to open his account, you know, I felt my spirit, you know, like, you know, look beyond what you're seeing with your natural eye and, and, and speak to him. So I'm like, all right, you know, start talking to him, naturally open the account, asking him questions. And him just start opening personal life to me. You know, you know, bright, you, you used to go to school and do very well, just follow badness and, you know, him get shot. He might tell me how him get to cut them in them face and him get stitches. And I was like, wow, this young man have a lot of potential, but, you know, he just needs somebody to really just show him the way. And I said to him that, you know, Jesus loves you. And him look for me and him start shaking me and like me say, well, you know, I probably hear that before. I'm like, no. I said, all the stuff that you've been telling me and I'm sitting here listening, you sh should have died. You should have died, but God has kept you here. You're sitting here before me for a purpose, for a very reason. There's a reason why you're the last person I'm talking to right now. And I just started to minister to him and him just start crying. Um, in that moment, him just start wiping him eye and him start crying in front of me. And I said, I know I have very few minutes and I have to let you go and finish your transaction. But can I just take just a few minutes right now just to pray with you? And while he was crying, he was saying, yes, please. And I just prayed for him and just tell him that, hey, you know, Jesus loves you and he would he wants me to tell you that here today and all you have to do is just believe that he loves you and that he he came for you and that once you believe that i mean you call out to him and you believe he he will save you and him say yes and in that moment i mean he went to the teller finished the transaction he came back to me and he was like Thanks very much. I mean, thanks a lot. I'm like, yeah, man, everything cool, chief, man. Everything, big up yourself in general. And I'm like, yeah, man, keep praying for me. You know, I hope you remember for prayer for me. And I'm like, I will. And he left. So even in that moment, I, I did so many. Really yes, I, I did so many transactions for so many people throughout the day. But that one moment, which was the last moment of the day, made me feel like it was very much accomplished because... I, I, I could very much save somebody's life at the end of the day, you know? So, I mean, what we do so much is not the, the main thing with our jobs. It's really how we use it as a way of advancing God's kingdom, using it as a, as a, as a platform, you know, as a, as a medium in terms of how we get the, the task done. And so I just want to say that that's a that's an awesome testimony right there, Nevada. And that's what we have to do. We have to seize every opportunity that we get. So the opportunity that presented itself to Nevada right there and then was the opportunity to minister Christ to someone. The opportunity for Obidea was to hear them saying, Listen, we're gonna kill off a certain amount of people. And Obidea say, Yo, here what? I have this information. So with this information, I'm going to seize the opportunity to hide some of these profits. My pocket can afford a hundred and out of that, I will ensure that they're fed and I'll ensure that based on the terrain and where I know that Ahab and his people will not look for these profits, I will put them there, put them up there and save them. And so what I'm saying, let's start family is that Opportunities come knocking at our doors in so many different ways to advancing his kingdom, whether it be through information, um, whether it be through the opportunity of someone coming before you and you having the opportunity to, to spread Christ and speak gospel and, and, and ministering to people. 
we have to take a hold of these opportunities. We have to seize them. It, we don't need an event. We don't need um, a prophetic word. We don't need a charge. We don't need... Give the pulpit nuts. Right. We, we just need to look at life and how the different persons that are in our life and the different information that we come across and the different opportunities that are presented to us and take a hold of them and use them. No, I don't see where Obadiah was like the most fearless person because if he was, when Elijah met him, he would have do what Elijah tell him to do. No, if the man say, yo, what could have caused this? You heard that, listen, you know, so the people that might kill off people, you know, so the people that might look for you, you want me to tell my boss, say, me see you and him for come meet and when you, when God now make you just disappear, me for dead, me not dead over you, it's not going to work. And it wasn't until Elijah said to him, um, as the Lord Almighty lives whom I serve, I will surely present myself to Ahab today. It wasn't until he got that promise. So you don't need to be the most fearless for the Lord to use you at an opportune time. You need to just be the most available. Let's talk. We're here. Chris, give me an amen on that now. Amen. 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 Thank you on that one, sir. Thank you on that one. So, <laughs> as I move on to the experience of Mount Carmel, and we know this story very well. I think everybody here on this platform knows this story. I can't. My computer is not coming. I can move off. Someone is saying something? I think I'm hearing someone, but I'm not hearing the person. I'm saying you're hearing me know the story. Oh, but, all right, all right. I, I am assuming. <laughs> I am assuming the case. All right, but let me just go through the story and just, as I say, if you have a deeper revelation, bring it. Um, but this is this is what the Lord brought out. So Mount Carmel was basically where we call it the showdown. Most times when we hear this message preached, I've always envisioned it. I grew up in the ghetto, right? So every time I hear this preach, you know when you have a lane and you have a house, couple of houses on one side and you have a couple of houses on the other side. And some always see preach like, you know, victory is out of God. But anyways, that may be just me when I hear this message. But in reading it today, I realized that the experience on Mount Carmel was an, evangel it was an evangelistic experience. It was an experience where God was shutting up the influencers in the land. It wasn't something that just happened for the sake of happening. It was deliberate. It was strategic. Now, I have it up on my screen, and I hope persons were read it, reading it, because I'm just going to go through and just pick through some sections. Um, he would have presented himself to King Ahab, and, you know, King Ahab said, boy, you know, troublemaker, and Elijah seemed to be one of those feisty ones said no you are the troublemaker and so they had their little dialogue right there but then he further went on to say that trying to if we're reading you will see on verse 22 where it says and Elijah said to them I'm the only one of the Lord's prophet left me no know if you know, him did just feel like I'm alone. The hundred people did all right. I'm one or never in the cave. 
You understand? So I thought persons were, you know, I've heard many stories about how Elijah viewed himself at this time because the man tell him, say, I'm about 100 prophets and him keep on saying it's him alone. It was him alone. Those 100 persons were put away. He was on the front line still doing what the Lord told him to do. So in his eyes, it was him alone. And I can understand, I have an understanding of where Elijah was because Elijah was tired too. So we have to understand Elijah's mental state. It's different from when me and you are talking and we are saying, boy, we're there from the back of the field and two demons are fight when we're tired and whatever. This man had somebody trying to kill him. An entire kingdom was trying to kill him. He was running for his life. I don't know if anybody on this platform knows what it feels like to be constantly looking over their shoulders, constantly wondering if they're at the right place at the right time or if somebody ever snuck them out. That's the vibe Elijah had. But in the midst of that pressure, that mental state, feeling alone, he was still zealous for the Lord. So Elijah said to Ahab, um, 400, da, 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 da. it was 400, I believe, prophets of Baal and 450 prophets. I'm sorry, I'm not sure. Someone speaking? No? No, no, go ahead. Okay, so it says, mm, blah, 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 but Baal has 450 prophets. Get two bulls. There was another 400 prophets. I'm not sure of I'm trying to find the name of that God, but it's in there. Read. Um, so he told them, you know, the setup, get two bull, get the people, get the 850 prophet, um, 850 prophets. Let's meet up on this mount. And so all of them go up there and he let them and he let them um, do what they had to do first. And he did, in the midst of them doing it, you will see in verse 27 that he started to say, oh, shout louder. Now, at this time, you know, the prophets were cutting themselves. They were shouting. They were rolling. And these are the prophets of Baal. One second, guys. Sorry about that. So they were cutting themselves. They were doing everything that they knew how to call on their God. Now, hold on. The Bible called them prophets. They were the prophets of Baal. Never call them false prophets. Prophets of Baal and the prophets of whatever. Now, you had 450 who served Baal, and there's another 400. I'm trying to find the name of the other one. If somebody finds the name, just say it out for me, please. And the, those prophets would have influence in the land because persons would have been listening to the prophets because Israel was in a backslidden state at this time. Can somebody tell me the name, please? Ashera. Um, thanks, Samaya. And 400 prophets of Ashera who ate at Jezebel's table. That's verse 19. No, I, 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 I had to stop a bit and look a little bit more into the role of the prophets at that time. And... <clears throat> You would have to understand that this they were killing out God's God's prophet. So the influence of the voice of the Lord was not being heard. And remember that a hundred was in hiding. So even though they were alive, their voice was not being heard. They were not speaking, thus saith the Lord, at the time. So the voice that would have been in operation at the time, right here, so would be those 450 those 850 prophets. 
Now, if we look at it, when they spoke, they would have shaped the mind of the people. They would have influenced their thought pattern as well as influence. They would have influenced their thought pattern. They would have influenced their culture. They would have influenced their way of living at that time. And so I'm scrolling down some more. This showdown ultimately came down to verse 46. And if I'm moving up too far, we can go back and forth. Where it said, the, no, not verse 46, sorry, verse 37. And Samila, this is after the, the 850 did, um, well, the 450 did their madness, ball out, and Elijah mocked them and said, all right, shout loud, and maybe you got to, you know, arrest, maybe you got to mind the fire, bring him back. He said, when Elijah did what he did and saturated the, um, the sacrifice, and the altar with the, the water. And he, he was deliberate about what he did. And I want you to take notes, guys. Elijah did not, you did not see in the Bible, Eli, um, another prophet coming to Elijah to tell Elijah what to do. So in the midst of him being right there and then, and for those who flow in the prophetic who are on the platform, it was right there and then that Elijah was getting his download from heaven as to what to do. And the Lord was speaking to him about what to do. And so he saturated the thing. And when he saturated the thing, he saturated him well wet it up. So them not say a breeze blow upon it and it light. It well wet. It soak. Trench full of water. Everything full of water. Chris, I can't keep the chat. Um, is that a question? In the chat? Um says, yeah, I like that part when Elijah mocked the Baal prophets. And so he mocked them. Yeah. But at the end of it, guys, it says, when he prayed at verse 37, he said, answer me, Lord, answer me. So these people will know that you, Lord, are God and that you are turning their hearts back again. So God never did it because he wanted to show off that he was God. He did it because he needed to turn the hearts of the people because you think about it. You think about visualize 850 prophets. One prophet, a king who believes in those other prophets and the Israelites who came out to see what was happening, whose heart was turned towards those gods because those were the influence in the land at the time. Elijah's responsibility was weighty. And then we know we, we, we know the story of Elijah. So Elijah kind of freely, freely. So you just imagine that anointing that came upon him for him to stand up and even jeer the next man prophet, the, the other prophet then. And he prayed to the Lord and it wasn't a prayer of God, show them that you are God. He said, and that he said, so these people will know that you Lord are God and that you are turning their hearts back again. And then we all know fire come down and burn up everything and, you know, the whole leveling and whatever, whatever. And the people turned towards God in that moment. And here is the part that I love. The Lord allowed Elijah to kill 450 prophets. 450 out of the 80, I believe he killed. 
killing them at that time was shutting up the voice of the influencers. Amen. It was shutting up the voice of the influencers in the earth, in that region at that time. So the Lord did a demonstrative thing by showing up and saying, see, I'm God. That demonstration turned the heart of the people towards God. And it allowed the opportunity once again for Elijah to turn now and get rid of 450, as we would want to call them, false prophets. Amen. To shut up those voices because they were the dominant voices in the land. Amen. You're right, Natalie. Many times we, we just, we read the story and we look at it as um, just a mere competition and as just maybe God showing off. But the fact that, as you mentioned, um, Jezebel at the time was trying to silence the, the, the voice of the, the, the prophets. And not just necessarily because they are just prophets, but because they were the influencers at that time. Right? And so um, that was the, 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 the objective. And so even Obadiah, as you mentioned, um, God had put him in a very strategic position, basically, um, to use his influence, his knowledge there in the, in, in the, in the, king, in the kingdom at that time, um, as you would say, uh, maybe a permanent secretary. Um, he was in the, 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 the sphere of government and stuff. And so it, it, taught, it, it shows that dual role that God really has would have him to play at the time so he was doing his duty right serving ahab but at the same time he was serving ahab king and he was serving god and so sometimes we really are offended because we think that we should not serve um an ungodly king your boss is supposed to be a christian and all, and all of that but the truth is that is where you want to be you want to be in a place where you don't have a lot of influence of God. And so you can become now that, that, um, that key, that person that God can use in that arena to really execute his will and purpose. So he was really in a strategic position and um, he really was not even, maybe he was not necessarily the bravest person, but somehow he took the risk to hide those prophets basically. Because as you said, he must have been worrying and saying, hey, what if Elijah, this, what if Ahab discovered that I, I hid those prophets? What would have become of my life? Because and he, can goes, imagine, and he goes to work every day knowing that he's hiding 10, 100. And, and he, he has to sit into meetings every day. And yes. he serves his king every day knowing exactly. that he, he has a king of kings agenda on mm -hmm. the back burner. And yeah. he... he of course, me no know him in the drink some only for sour sap juice. Feel nerves did level. Feel nerves did I, I, level, Chris. It's, it's interesting because I'm not sure if, if we look at our, our lives that way, that we could be in a meeting at work and we could just simply as go to the bathroom and the Spirit Ooh. of Lord can download something to us that really is like two kingdom in operation at the same time. You're serving your boss, you just come out of a meeting, but just in the bathroom, the Spirit of Lord give you an upload. Not necessarily about yourself, but how to preserve people, how to, how to be an influence in a certain decision. When, when a decision is going to be made, the Lord can say, hey, steer it this direction because this is my will and my purpose. And so it's really a, 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 an awesome opportunity and a privilege in a sense to be in these locations among maybe the, 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 the worst of people in a sense because Ahab really wasn't a nice guy, right? And to be able to be serving, who would want to serve Ahab? <laughs> that's, that's the truth. Who would want to serve Ahab and Jezebel? Don't even talk about him, Don't look even how, talk about no, him more. Look how we talk about Jezebel. You understand? Look how we talk about Jezebel. We don't want nobody named Jezebel. We don't want to call her. We, we don't want anybody around us named Jezebel. That's so wicked. So even just the fact that nobody is going to apply for that job. 
wanted permanent secretary in Ahab and Jezebel's kingdom. Nobody's going to apply for that job. But somehow Abadiah applied for the job, got the job, started working, and then God really set him up and started using him. And I think the kingdom of heaven was happy to know that there was a man of God in that evil kingdom that, they, that he could depend on to use and to, and to carry out his will. Wow. And it comes back again that we look at that we look at um, eras like the government and we say, boy, politics dirty, right? And we say, boy, Christians should not be in politics and, and we, we should not be in certain places. And then we look at certain people in society and oh, we say, boy, those people are evil and they are in lodge and, and they are this and that and all of that. But these are the places that we, based on the scripture, that we should be. Because who, who, who is God using there? If we are not there and there's no Christian, there's no men or women of God there, who can God use there to bring his kingdom in that arena? So there's just so much in that scripture, Natalie, and sometimes we're at that place and we don't even see ourselves that way. Because we're not thinking. We just want to go to the workplace and to get out quickly. Just work and we go to our church. Church is our safe haven, basically. We're not looking the fact that, listen, hey, you know, as, as you opened earlier, a thought came to me and, 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 and you mentioned it. And uh, the, the, the pulpit, we believe that if you're not around the pulpit, you have no influence. And God wants to take the pulpit in our workplaces. And I was just thinking that anywhere we are, anywhere, all of us have our own pulpits, basically. Anywhere. And we have to we have to start looking at life that way. Stop stop looking at the church. And I'm not this I'm not saying to put on church or anything. That has its place. It has its place where a certain influence will come from the pulpit. The pastor is preaching, all of that is good. We're not saying that. But sometimes it, it it's the power is not um oh God. What should I say? It's unbalanced. And I always say this, that we have powerful pulpits and very puny pews, right? And it's because, so we think that the pastor has the influence, but we don't see ourselves as influencers. And so God wants us to see ourselves as a pulpit, having a pulpit before us. And we should use that pulpit when we are in our workplaces, in our government offices, wherever we are, at and just home, at home, sure. wherever. Yes. Wherever, once an opportunity presents itself for you to, to influence your space, mm. do so. Mm. But I'm excited, so. Nats, that Ahab was an evil king and there was a man of God there. And look at all the kings in the Bible. Look at Pharaoh. Look at, look at, look at, um, I Not mean. All of them, something nice. No, meaning that Nebuchadnezzar. Is that God st always strategically, in spite of how they are evil, God always put a man. It was a man of God who brought answers there. Mm -hmm. Right? It was a man of God who was there. Man or woman of God. And today I'm saying that we have to change our mindset, change our perspective, and begin now to penetrate, to really target these areas, and to go in them deliberate and say, God, I'm going in there, what you have to say. Talk to me here, God. Because he wants something, and anytime we're not at a certain location, the kingdom, and I'm going to say it this way, the kingdom of heaven suffers because there's no influencers in that arena. And that's why we talk about seven mountains. Say it, one after you. Sorry there, not to cut you, but I just want to, I want to say to the, everyone that's on, 28 of us on tonight, you are strategically placed where you are to influence. Every single one of us on this platform tonight, you have been strategically placed where you are to create influence. You may not want it, but it's not what you want, is what you were created to do. There's that problem, problem exists for many others who haven't said. I'm not, not sure that's for us, not for Okay. Um, I'm going to ask 
You wanna ask that person to mute them um their mics for me, please. Thank you. So this we really don't have an excuse like me. If I was over there, I'd have put in my resignation a long time, me to make sure I find one next kingdom with one nicer king. I may talk truth, cause them the pressure there don't normal and me don't like stress. So we would have found a nicer king, kingdom for go work. I already have my resume kind of bill out already. You know, worked with one of the worst. I can't work with anybody else now. So as I said, I'm learning from, this is a learning experience. And so it just showed that too, I, I wanted to, to highlight is that when we perform or when the Lord allows us to do any form of what we would call miracles or perform anything supernatural, it is never for our satisfaction or gratification. Him using you as how he did Elijah was to turn the heart of an entire nation back to him. And so when we we walk, whether in signs, one, whatever, when the gifts of the spirit flows through us, whether it be word or knowledge, whatever it is, prophecy, healing, whatever it is, down to when Elijah does a translate about the place, it had its purpose. They knew that this was a man of God. When Obadiah came into his presence, I, I realized back then when, when persons came into the presence of the prophets, they would bow as though they were in the presence of um, kings. So he, his name carried respect with it. They knew who he, Elisha was. They knew the authority and the supernatural elements that he operated in. They knew. Anyone has any comments to make, anything to say before I, I go on? Yes, good evening. Hi, Janine, evening. Hi, good evening. All right, well, I realize like in the marketplace, Yes, like at work and so on as a Christian. Not um, hearing you, Jenny. Not Jenny, hearing no. me. Yeah, a little low. That's low. better? Yes, yes, much better. All right. So I realize in the marketplace as a Christian, right, what um, would increase your influence as a Christian is like when they see the spirit of wisdom come upon you and just revelations in difficult situations it's like you know they get a high respect for you especially when you're a very vocal child of god who speaks about the power of god and so on and they see like difficulties come in the workplace and because of god with you you get revelations and wisdom to work through things that they become nervous about and so on. So these things increase, you know, the belief the they have in the God, yeah, and increase their influence as well. So that also is powerful. Thank you. And, and I agree, and I agree. Anyone else? Is someone about to speak? So, you know, I, I just I just declare that the wisdom of God will come upon us. And when I say the wisdom of God, that means that some situations have to reach us <laughs> for his wisdom and his solutions to come out of us. And I don't like turbulence. I, I really would like, as I would say to anybody who knows me, I want to appreciate a drama-free life. But that's not possible. We're not really book it yet. But situations have to happen to kind of bring out what is, not to kind of, to bring out what is on the inside of you and to reveal who as well is on the inside. 
and the power that you walk in. The situations have to occur for manifestations to happen. And so I agree with Jenny in, in, in saying that. No, I'm going to move on a little bit. Just, just, just to say though, Natalie, and I'm going to sound a little bit um, controversial to that even point. Um, Go ahead. I think sometimes too, um, yes, there's one aspect of it where people would be would recognize God and they're looking for that. Um, but sometimes really, um, it's like we want to be solution oriented people and we want to be the Joseph, right? We want the answers to Pharaoh's dream, right? Not that's the ultimate. Of, not all but of us, some of us. That's where, you know, that's, that's kind of part of the ultimate, right? Um, however, over there was one of those ministry that was working behind the scene. And sometimes we have to appreciate the diversity of, 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 of God's work because not everybody is going to be the Joseph to interpret dreams and become prime minister. Some people are just going to be behind the scene, praying through a certain thing, hearing some top class, some classified information, top secret, some things that nobody else should hear. But because they hear it, they can be able to go on fasting, call up a few brothers and sisters and say, listen, this thing is happening. I can't divulge anything, but this is just a small amount of information. I can give you pray about it. And so even so having this, yeah, yes, it's solution, but it's not the solution on the forefront where you're going to come and say, oh, you know, the Lord gave me a vision and, and, and if you do this, your business is going to turn around. That has its place. But I'm just saying that we don't want to trump that only to allow others who are working behind the scene to feel bad, to feel that boy, because they are not, you know, upfront and personal with your ministry, but you know? Yeah. yeah. So we just have to appreciate it, right? Um, and so um, we just have to prepare ourselves. The fact that we're having this conversation tonight, Natalie, just, just let you know where God wants to take us. Just the fact that we're having this conversation. Just to tell you where he, he wants us to go and the mindset. So, so know that we have an understanding of the kingdom and that he wants his kingdom to influence Jamaica. Job opportunities will become much easier. <laughs> because sometimes we are praying about some stuff and, and, and because God literally shut down some doors because we are not going to be any influence in that era that he, but he wants to take us into some other avenues where his glory can be seen, where we can trust him, where he can tell us to apply for certain jobs in areas that we would not have thought of, but because of his purpose there, then he, he, he's going to steer us in that direction, right? So it is a whole lot is where God is taking us. I'm excited. And the truth is we have to listen and bring back the testimony because we need to hear. What is God doing with you in that palace? What is he saying to you? How is he using you? You understand? What is he, what, what is he using you to do? To save? To influence who? To what? What have you done? What did the Lord say to you? These are testimonies that need to come back to us in terms of the church so we can, again, understand the work of the Lord in this arena. Oh. Hello, guys. Hi. Can I chime in? Hi, sir. I didn't know you were here. Welcome. Yeah, I, was just, I just came on and was listening a lot, and this is awesome. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sorry I can't be seen because I'm on my iPad. My family is using my laptop, but this is awesome. But I just want to throw one thing in because I listen to, to Chris, and he's, as usual, very controversial, and, and this is awesome. I, I think one, one of the things that needs to happen again, and this might sound really awful and odd, is that um, I've been to so many churches and everybody is at the same, they put everybody at the same level. No other ent entity in the world does this. When you're at school, you go from grade one, grade two, grade three, grade four, grade five. When you're in the college, first year, second year, third year, graduate. You're, even, even when you're in a business, or when you're in a company, right? Right, Natalie? If you excel, 
they put in an advanced program or they put you somewhere else so that you can add value to the pro to the job progressively. That's only in the only in the church where the mindset has head is everything is at the cross and everybody sits here one level. So every Sunday you hear the same songs, you know, they hear the song about the cross and just the same level every Sunday. Same the same message, the message is for everybody. And if the message, if the pastor is just talking about salvation, then for the next 40 years, that's all you want to hear. I believe that the proper church is like a is like a is like is like a, a development school to get people out, graduate. So 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 like like for example, you are talking here about kingdom stuff, and you and you are pouring into people stuff that they can't use in their everyday church life because when they go back to church Sunday morning they're going to hear at the cross at the cross where I first saw the light even though that's what they heard 10 years ago and that's what they needed 10 years ago but now they don't only need at the cross at the cross they need, they, they, they need to hear how to walk in revelation in God how to walk in kingdom and so one of the stuff that I'm saying here guys is that as you look at I love what you're saying about um, Elijah and the, and the prophets and all of that stuff. And there is a, if, if you want to talk theoretically, there is a progression of Elijah in the entire narrative where he moved from just talking to individuals to talking to a nation. There's a progression. And for us to have this progression to the nation, the church itself has to progress. And so what happens in a couple of my churches that, that I work with is that you, you have on a Sunday, you have those who are beginners go to a different part of the service. Now, I was trying to do, do this in Jamaica, but it don't work because everybody just wants in the front part. But to have a real church now, Natalie, you can't have people who have been in the church who have seen deeper things. A good church every Sunday, I hear both basic stuff every day. God Almighty is on the morning. Yeah, you understand, sister, 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 and this is what is killing us, is that, is that there's no progression. There is, there is no movement. After they hear this now to deceive this evening, what are they going to do with it? Nothing at all. They just, they just want to go back to their hole, to their church's place, and just go back in the hole, and just go back again to, to the crying, the ball, and the nose now. There, there, there will be no more over spirit. Okay, how can I influence my company? Because you see, the lady who spoke earlier about the spirit of wisdom. No, but the people who spoke, spoke earlier about the spirit of wisdom, right? With, with wisdom. How is she going to learn how to hear from God, your emotion, and then use that wisdom in her office or at our Chris is saying at the back 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 door and come in and the boss, you know, say if you do it XYZ, listen to me. I became a consultant to one of the biggest meat producing companies in West Virginia. You know why? The, the guy came to Herbalife, where my wife is, completely overweight, stressing out. He started talking about, about his business place and that all the people were stressing out or how the workers have now perform and rare, rare, rare. Now, I don't have no HR training. But as I said last week, I listened to my wife. But then, because she's HR. But then what happened also that I have the spirit of God and wisdom. So I started talking to her about how to, to, to rearrange his people for them to be effective because I was a pastor and I know the people dynamic. He went back and did the same thing. Came back the next week, not looking for her, but like looking for Pastor Dino because, you know, hired me, a very hefty sum, right, to become his personal consultant and how to let his meat business run in perspective. When we, we were done, he ended up with five meat shops in the grill, Montego Bay, Trelawney, and he's up to this day, I wish I had patented it, using my formula for how to make people fun function. Now, I don't mean the wisdom, but, but what, what in that sense, but I have the knowledge of God, and because I was trained by individuals who have a particular mindset for kingdom, I could have recognized an opportunity and flow into it and move from it. The people need to start to, to, to start putting a demand upon their pulpit so that, as Christopher said, they will no longer be any puny pews. And you have to put a demand 
on the pulpit, ladies and gentlemen, on this platform and say, and so we don't want any more problem or any more gooey gooey food. It's nice and pretty back then. We want some real food now. Teach us how to walk in wisdom. Wisdom is not for, for babies. It's for people who are stronger. So I love what you're saying. I love where you're, love, love where you're going. But I have to say that because the Bible says you move from 30-fold to 60-fold to 100-fold. 30-fold is very, is very, very awesome if you have five-fold. If you have nothing. And most other church, Auntie, Auntie Natalie, are stuck at 30-fold. Right? We don't know what 64 is or 104 is in terms of God's anointing and God's benefit for us to walk in his kingdom. So I want to, I want to put it out there because I believe that as, we, as let's talk evolve, there is going to, going to be a revolution and people are going to say, we need more. We need more because more is required. We don't need more, as you said, for us to get big and bold and proud and big up our chest. And, and write our, our name in gold. No, we don't need more of that. We need more because right now more is required. I talk, I talk too much. Let me quiet. Bless you guys. That's fine, sir. That's fine. That's fine. You just did a wonder who trouble you, but you come out strong tonight, sir. <laughs> you, you know, so them trouble. You know, so them trouble me this morning, right? You, you, you know, you know where we went, right? Tired, man. Tired. So tired. I am going to now move on. So, um, verse forty. But but question, not before you move on. Um, I, I think we said something last week to this, and we're talking about change. And honestly, sometimes I think some people are confused. Should we wait on other people to change before we? move on with the process of change because it's like we are waiting until people pastor dino come into a certain level of revelation right before we before we can move from where we are and 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 the truth is we have to run with the truth that's right with what we know we have to run with what we know that's right you understand that's because right. god's kingdom have to advance and honestly there are people who are catching on and some people will never catch on Till the next right. 10 or 20 years. And there are many of us, it. many of us are listening tonight and we're saying, oh, we don't even want you to go without Jesus. I don't know. We can't avoid trouble. But it, it's not saying go back and, and maybe pull on your leadership because you're not thinking a certain way. So we're going to sit down and wait until they come. Until they change, we have to run with the truth. Run with what you have, basically. Create the change in your spirit and influence that arena. That's, mm. right. That's right. That's right. Listen to me. A great writer says, I can't, I'm trying to remember his name. I think he's one of the greatest Cappadocian fathers. You can recognize him. I think his name is Basil. He, he says, truth has to run beside what is past until truth out, outruns what was. Wow. And so we have to run beside. We have to, we have to cast what has happened. We have sat down and we have been waiting for, 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 for the past to catch up. But the past can never catch up to where mm. God is going. Wow. And the truth, the, 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 the truth is never in the past. The truth, truth is always in our present and in our future. What was in the, what was in the past is now principles. Mm. Right? Principles don't work in the future. Pure principles are in the past. Something that is set, something that is good. So, and principles come from a truth that has evolved. And so we have to run, run with it. We are not saying people to go and rebel and, and blackwood and burn tire. If, if, if you don't know that, Natalie will, not, not, Natalie will burn tire. But anyway, no. What, what, what we're saying is that is to gently pull on your, the coat of your leaders and, say, and start asking questions. And start saying, sir, this is what God is saying to me. How can you help me? How can you do it? And be there and just keep prodding them. And if God is in those leaders, my God, they will start to go before God. I have become the way I am like this because of my children. My children look at me and say, you are preaching every day about God, 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 and we don't say nothing. We, we want to see God too. So guess what? I had a choice. We either run from God or run to God. And when time we run to God and things are going, I'm, I'm walking and say, how you like, how, how you like me now? We say, we we'll pray for that, and it happened. And the devil said, yeah, God real. You, 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 you understand me? You have to start 
to put a gentle demand upon the people, but 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 keep listening to what God is saying saying to you, and yes. and keep right and keep going until mm. until truth outruns the past. Amen. Okay. That's powerful. Can continue now, please. Anybody else is talking? Anybody else have anything to contribute? <laughs> Uh, Anyone has anything else to say? Mm. Oh my God. Mm. Wow. Mm. Chris, if you mm, one more time, what's no, you want I, no, go, no. <laughs> I'm listening. No, I'm listening. I, I, I really just, I really just think of how sometimes, um, God really don't have any options. We don't give him options. I mean, Obadiah was. He could have depended on Obadiah in that office, Natalie. What if Obadiah was not there? Understand? So, you know, I really it, it would be good to know that it it, it would be good to know that heaven can be discussing and saying, "Wow, Natalie is there. Let us use her." You understand? Let us use this person in that in that arena. Let, let's use them. You understand? Let's give them some money, equipment, bless them so that they can they can take care of certain needs of the kingdom. But when you think of it, when God really, when the kingdom don't have no option because we have really not catch on to certain truths. Um, our kingdom, and I said, our kingdom is not going to advance because we have to start owning it now. Our kingdom is not going to advance. God really have no option sometimes when we are really not in the marketplace. And where some of us are humble, we don't want to climb the ladder. We just want to stay at that low level where we have no influence. And God wants to take us higher. He said, we are the head and not the tail. We are above and never beneath. Why are you going to be above? So that you can become an influence. Wow. Why you need to have money? Why you need to be rich? So that you can have influence. You can have talk. You can go on the table with certain big men and have certain conversation. So that you can actually find somewhere to put God's people and feed them because of it. I do have money in order to feed a heart. You just think about it. I have problems feeding one, two, how much you have, Chris? Three children. <laughs> you find food and water for a hundred men. Mm. Amen. And we don't know how long he had them in hiding. Till They were in hiding so long till Elijah said, I'm the only one. <laughs> Yeah, but he must have gotten, he really must have gotten good pay, Natalie, if you take on a hundred men. That, 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 yeah, he must have, have, have money. That, have wasn't have money that, that wasn't a small feat. No, every day. Every and many, day. and many, nothing, no, three times a day. <laughs> um, I see Sabrina hand up. Um, Sabrina, can you unmute your mic? Good evening, let's talk. Good evening, Christopher and Natalie. Um, Chris, I really love the story about Elijah. That's one of the, the story that really draw me in the Bible. And as has noted in the group, I've always questioned a lot about Elijah because, as you said, Nat, he progressed. And he moved from one level to another where he was able to transcend. That, that's the word, transcend. Translate. Uh, yeah, okay, astro production or whichever it is, whatever it is. But we understand what we're talking about, right? And I, he moved from one level to another, and I was like, "But Elijah, how we move from right there? I don't know if I'm going too fast, not till no, where okay. if he was ending up fearing Jezebel." But I was like, "But you just kill off 450 false prophets." And you did this, you call on fire, and then it's like when him go back into his flesh. When flesh is like him own reality, lick him, it's like, okay, no more my for hide. Till the Lord ask him, what are you doing? What are you doing? However, as it relates to Obadiah, though, he was a very influential man in that season, and he made a lot of impact because after that, you didn't hear anything about Obadiah in the Bible. So even for that small season, for, this, for that small period, it does really show the influence and the impact that he made 
for that particular season. And it, I never looked at it that way. I've never gotten the revelation as it relates to the work. And as Chris said, you know, or what you said, Natalie, you know, you're in a place where you have access to certain things. So therefore you can make an impact to the body of Christ. So I really cherish that. Um, I really appreciate that revelation and uh, I really like it. Thumbs up. Thank you. So we're going to continue now. Um, Chris, don't do one more. Mm. I'm going to mute my mic, okay? <laughs> um, so just bringing it in because really I'm going to stop at um, first thing 19, verse 18. That's where I'm going to stop. And this is just continuing. So we were at... Um, the reason why he did it, verse 37. And then we saw where it says, and then the fire of the Lord fell and burned up, da-da-da. Going down now to verse 40, Elijah sees them and he commanded them to slaughter all of the man them man. As I said, killing them was not just for the sake of killing them, but killing them was for the sake of changing influence shutting down their voices because then the prophets were 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 simultaneous to kings because I, I i realized that in the presence of a prophet that is respected people bow people bow and show their respect and it's the same thing now if you think about jlp pmp it's the words it's the policies that are put in place that people hold on to. So people will hold on to a Michael Manley day and a Buster Manti day and, and shape their thought patterns um, around, as we would call it, socialism versus communism and all of these stuff. So God silenced 400 voices, 400 influencers. And so us manifesting in the earth through whether it be signs and wonders and miracles is not for the sake of just manifesting. It is for the sake of advancing God's kingdom by whatever means necessary. I'm not sure how much of us would uh, draw a sword and kill. Maybe. Anyways, just moving along. Um, <laughs> um, so we went down now to da, 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 da. and Elijah think we're at 41 and Elijah said to Ahab go eat and drink and there there and there is a sound of heaven of heavy rain now two things happen the Lord silenced the influencers now remember that rain never fall for almost three years so after the Lord silenced the influencers shut up a set of people Eli Elijah Elijah looked at the horrible king, he did not kill the king. He did not kill the king. He killed the prophets. He looked at the king. And he said to him, go and eat and drink. And there is a sound of heavy rain. So in the midst of knowing that Ahab is still waking, he's still serving. And so Ahab went off to eat and drink and Elijah climbed to the top of Carmel, bent down on the ground and to his face between his knees. And some person says he was praying. I think after reading this story a couple of times, I'm not sure about anybody. God ever gave a word and you just step on Jesus. No, do make the word go, go, go. I felt as he was having one of those moments. I said I could be wrong. And he sent the servant to go and look and the servant as we know went how many times and it was on the um seven times elijah said go back and on the seventh time this the the, the the servant reported that he saw a small cloud and elijah say yeah no what i have recognized between the progression of elisha is that elisha progressed in how he heard god in how he 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 was aware of his elements because sometimes people think hearing the voice of god is the only way 
he was aware of, 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 of the elements, the things around him. He said to the servant, God, tell me what you see. Now tell me what you hear. Remember, he said to Ahab, you know, he heard heavy rain. Now, him said to the servant, tell me where you go see. Now, for some of us, if you hear heavy rain, you say, so where you send the servant for if you hear the rain? You know, must did not say if you hear it, it did ever fall. No, Elijah was a normal man, he wanted a confirmation. Servant, tell me where you go see. I heard it. He talked big talk. Ahab, go and eat and drink. I hear. And Ahab would have trusted Elijah's voice after the experience that they just had, I don't know how much hours ago or days ago, with Mount Carmel. So if, if me see the man do that, and the man tell me, say, yo, me hear something, go and go eat. My nerves calm and settle. That means me never fall. But in Elijah's self, Elijah's nerves never calm and settle. So when him here, he told the the servant to go look at the servant. So I'm bringing it back down to us now. We still are trying to work out some stuff with the Lord. We're still working out our relationship with God. In the midst of this transformation that we're going through, in the midst of this empowerment that we're going through, there are certain things that are still shaky inside of us. And that's fine. The beauty of it is that we are in a relationship with God and God understands. How many know God understands is not just the story of Elijah, but I look at the story of Chris, what our guy name? And unmute. What our guy name? Gideon. Yeah. Gideon was a coward all the way through. God used him. God understood where the man was at. And I know we like for beat up on Elijah and say, yo, Elijah, how you do that? And then you run the hide. The man here said, the woman, I'm going to kill him. I don't know what it is to have an entire kingdom of horsemen. I don't know what that is. I don't know what it is to have that level of sleepless night. Because I am sure this is not a principality or power or a ghost tale or a or a minus sure if a one demon kind of story. Me sure no say there's a queen where nobody them them reverence her name, them treat Jezebel like she Lucifer wife. I try to kill me. And let me back up. So we're at now 44. And so he got excited. And he said, all right. So Elijah said, go and tell Ahab. Hitch up your chariot. Put your chariot together and go down before the rain stops. Before the rain stop you. So he got his confirmation. But, but Natalie, you mentioned the whole progression in terms of hearing. That he heard first. And then he told his servants to go and look. Um, so that he could get this confirmation. Go up on the mountain, go, uh, um, go up on the mountain, go bust up, go bust up, bend down before the Lord. Yeah. God, yeah, kind of, my nervous still, but we just, we just say. That's how yeah. I do it. So, yeah, but you're right, and we have to bring it home, because sometimes we look at these guys as, as superhumans, right? And I mean, he, he told his servants to go seven times. Now, was that seven times, was seven confident times, or I said, nah, man, hold on, man. Assure me here the Lord said that. Go back again and tell me what you said. And the man come back and say, no. And say, hold on, man. But, I mean, isn't this how I hear God before? I mean, there's, there's a whole lot of thing there that we can, we can always take from it. Rather than saying, oh, Elijah would just be boldly and say, come on, servant, I heard the Lord. Go and look again. No, sir, I don't say anything. I know I heard the Lord. Go. No. He could be shaking out of his wits to say, no, nah, man, I, I know I hear God spoke a while ago. And, and, and this seven years is just a moment. What is our, this seven times is just maybe within a short time, Natalie. Mm -hmm. But this seven times for many of us could be seven months. It could be seven years. It could be over a long period of time that we are seeking a confirmation on what we hear. 
God told us something, and we're looking for the confirmation. Mm. We don't know how long it's going to take. And we go again, we wait. It could be a sickness in your body. It could be something that the Spirit of the Lord has told you that he's going to heal you from. And you're waiting for that manifestation. And day one pass, you have not seen anything. Day two pass, not seen anything. Day three pass, and sometimes you might feel discouraged. God, you're not coming through. I know, I heard you say, I heard this, I heard that. But you have to continue until, as the Bible said, the seventh time. Not necessarily seven, but the fact is complete until you see the evidence or the manifestation of what God has spoken to you. Yeah. Thanks, sir. So, in the midst of all of that happening, Christopher, uh, God is good. I don't know. Yeah, God is good. <laughs> um, so it says, meanwhile, the sky grew black with clouds, the wind rose, and heavy rain started to fall, and Ahab rode off to Jezreel. The power of the Lord came upon Elijah and tucking his cloak into his belt. Now remember, you know, Ahab ride off with his chariot. So chariots are driven by horses. That's the main throttle. And more than likely, it's either one horse or two horses. Knowing him as a king, he may have four. Because I'm not like normal people. And it says that the power of the Lord came upon Elijah and tucking his cloak into his belt, he ran ahead of Ahab all the way to Jezreel. And the Spirit of the Lord said to me when I read that part, he says, Natalie, that's the same power you can access today. This is not Elijah accessing something special. He was able to run ahead of horses and in reach of the place before. And so what I want for you to understand, let's start family, is that this is not metaphorical. This is not, you know, people with the words, help me with the words. Help me with the words. Renee, help me with the words, please. Metaphorical and all the other words. This is really happening and can happen and will happen if you allow the Lord to really use it. We have a we have a, a blocker that's happening, and I I had it too. I I had it too where you just thought some stuff was really just for that day and age and that time, but in reading it. The Spirit of the Lord says, you, you know, have you still, at this moment, you have access. And so I'm moving on quickly as I know time is winding down. Oh, sorry. So we're on to now verse 19. No, sorry, chapter 19. My apologies. No, that happened. Rain stopped, fall, never fall for three years. And Ahab now goes back and tells his wife everything that happened. Now you know Jezebel get mad and said that by tomorrow, same time, the very thing that he did, you know, she going to wipe him out. And this is the part that all of us conflict with, like, how, how can you go through all of this? And it said Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. I've never had my life threatened like that so i cannot speak to it if somebody on the platform has ever had their life threatened like this maybe you can speak to it but i'm putting myself a little bit 
in his shoe that his life was threatened by not just a mere man walking on the road, but it's like Andrew Holness saying that I am the number one wanted man in the country. Anyway, you see him? Done him. I don't know what that feels like, but you have, I think Elijah has steady nerves because I would have afraid to. Because I know that whatever just happened and the power of God that happened, that this woman's heart was not turned any bitter walk towards my God. This woman was not in a redemptive mode. Jezebel, can't, Jezebel is not being redeemed. She don't want a redemption. It's not like another person who you know God was going to change the heart of this person. Jezebel was not turning her heart towards the Lord. And you kill off my influence as them. You kill off the people who was making her life easier. <coughs> Excuse me. Because those prophets were clearly all not in the same place. They were dispersed throughout the kingdom speaking the same foolishness that she wanted them to speak and having the people them you know subjected to these prophets and her turn towards you and you go do what so you kill off all of the mp them one the thing did i go up you kill off all of the mp and all of the era leader them how is it then that she's going to have influence how is it that her influence is going to spread so he is the he is the most wanted you gotta find it. The most wanted. And so Elijah was afraid for his life and he ran for his life. And when we go down, it says he came to a broom bush, sat down under it, and prayed that he might die. Because think of the man's mental state, the man must be tired. Because it's not yesterday in my run, and a one day in my run, and a one month in my run, and a two months in my run. He's been running for his life for a while. He is now tired. And I believe if you read the scriptures, you will see where he said, I am tired. And the Lord said, Okay. He says, Take my life. I'm no better than my ancestors. And I'm reading verse 4 down to the end, going on to verse 5. Then he laid down under the bush and fell asleep. All at once an angel touched and said, get up and eat. He looked around and there was, and there by his head was some bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. And that still can happen now, people of God. He ate and drank and he lay down again and the Lord fed him a second time. And, and it just shows you how how Elijah has been progressing in the realm of the supernatural as well. Because here it is now that the angels of the Lord is feeding Elijah. So my, in one in run with left horse and chariot, he has no angels feeding him. And he after the angels fed him, it said that, verse 8, he got up and ate and drank, strengthened by the food. He traveled 40 days and 40 nights. He never lie down. He walked for 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Horeb, Horeb, the mountain of God. And then he went into a cave and spent the night. We say he hid there. And the word of the Lord came to him. What are you doing there, Elijah? And Elijah answered, Honestly, and I love his his response. He said, I've been very zealous about the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected the covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left. Yeah, we know him of the hundred, but in Elijah mine, the hundred are chill in a one cave where nobody knew about and they are being fed. So as far as him know, a female one, female neck one, they on the line. And now they're trying to kill me too. And the Lord says, go and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is 
about to pass by. And I know we know this one. This one we hear preached a lot. And I, I, I saw it different today. So it says that then the, a great powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shut out the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind was the earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake was a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. Usually when we hear that, we get in our spirit from the one that say, yeah, you know, if it this and if it if God is not always in the loud stuff and whatever. But funny enough, what the Lord said to me, he said, look at an environment. And this is what the Spirit of the Lord said to me today. He said, look at an environment, Natalie. If a hurricane is coming, what happens before the hurricane comes? There's, there's a setup. There's a buildup before a hurricane comes. Usually on the day that the hurricane is coming, the place becomes so hot. It becomes very, very, um, the atmosphere becomes very dense. You, you feel the heat and he's like, yeah, I say, yes, something is about to happen. He said that this is me saying that, how, what was the word, Chris? I'm meeting my... Proceed. Proceed. These things was the proceeding. These things were happening for his entrance. So he was coming and the earth, the atmosphere, the environment was reacting to his coming. And it's the same thing in the last days. The earth is going to react to the coming of the Lord. So it's not about the fact that he was not in the earthquake. Then an old earthquake happened. It was, it, the earth was feeling, it was responding to the coming of the Lord. And the Lord said to me that this, this little section here is not just speaking to this time but what is to come when he's about to touch down again and then it said on the last one which we we said oh god is in just a small no and after the fire came a gentle whisper when elijah heard it he pulled the cloak over his face went out and stood at the mount of the cave then a voice said to him elijah discerned the lord he heard and knew that okay the whisper now means that the presence of the lord has showed up before all that was happening was a precursor of what is to come is that the correct word I'm getting there and so the Lord again asked him the question and he replied the same way he did up the top. He replied the same way at this place. That he has been jealous, zealous for the Lord. Lord God Almighty, the Israelites have rejected the covenant, tore down altars and put your prophets to death with the sword. I'm the only one left and they're trying to kill me too. And in the midst of that, God himself responded with instructions. And I was just blown away by verse 15 to 18, which I'm going to stop at. Here are the instructions, guys. I'm sorry, I'm excited. Elijah cried out and said, God, I'm me one. They must try to kill me. The Lord said to him, go back the way you came and go to the desert of Damascus where you will get, when you get there, anoint Hazael, king over Aram. Also anoint Jehu, son of Nim Nimshi, king over Israel. And anoint Elisha, son of Saphat, from Abel, Mohel, Mohla, to succeed you as prophet. So Ahab was king and God fire Ahab and Ahab never knew. So Ahab at that time was still reigning, but God said, all right, new appointment start. So he appointed a king over Aram, a king over Israel, and now Elijah's successor who who is Elisha. And this is the part that got me excited. It says here, 
Jehu will put to death any who escapes the sword of Hazael. So Hazael will start to put them a clean house. So Hazael will be putting to death some of these, these ungodly people. Anyone that escaped Hazael, it said Jehu will put to death any who escaped the sword of Hazael. And Elisha will put to death any who escaped the sword of Jehu. And so it, God did not just do stuff, guys, because he had nothing to do. He was deliberate. And I want to say to you, I'm not sure how much of us are still online. God is deliberate about the word over your life. God is deliberate when he sends help. And he sent help for Elijah by anointing three men. And he did it in such a strategic way. And I want to say to you that God is strategic in your life. Your life is not a coincidence. What is happening to you is not a coincidence. It is the strategic playing out of what God is doing and is, oh, how can I put, I'm trying to find the words, guys. What God is doing in your life now and the manifestations that you, that are to come. And so he said to him that any, any hazel miss, Jehu will catch. If Jehu not catch all of them, Elijah will put to death any who escape the sword of Jehu. And then he encouraged Elijah, yet I reserve 7,000 in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed down to Baal and whose mouths have not kissed him. And that's how I end. Let's talk. Bible study. <laughs> um, you're not in this alone. And your reality is your reality. And some persons may not understand what you're going through. We can identify with some stuff, but we may not understand what you're going through. But God is deliberate and he's strategic. And if you are about your father's business, as Obidale was, and Elijah was, he will be strategic and deliberate about you. In the midst of knowing that he, his life was, could have been snuffed out at any time, he said it, he said, God, I am zealous for you. And because he was zealous for God, he was willing to still do what the Lord wanted him to do, go up on Mount Carmel, tell Elijah about the, the um, tell Ahab about the rain, he, he was zealous. He wanted to see the hearts of the people of Israel turn and he wanted to see God's, his, the holy altars erected again. But in the midst of that, he was running for his life. I just want to say to you that what you're about to do for God will not always be pretty. Will not always have a smooth progression. But be deliberate about God. And he will be deliberate about you. I open the floor for anyone who have any questions, comments, statements. It's now your time as we are putting our last touches on closing off for tonight. I'm going to try and see what's in the chat. Anyone has any comments? There, can you just, I'm not hearing anyone open their mics. No comments. Any additional stuff, anything you want to share, anything you want to add? All right, Chris, can you just, Put your closing remarks and let us close out tonight.
just as you mentioned, um, you know, um, just to function as, as Obadiah and Elijah, just as you said, just to focus on um, being used by God. I mean, I think this story tonight, we looked at it in a, in a very different light um, about just being the influence of God. So um, let's just continue um, putting ourselves, just be an option for, for God and for his kingdom um, to use in this time to create influence in, in the arena that we're at. So um, it's really a lot said, and we just have to meditate and just allow him to move us out, move us out in our daily life um, to be that influence. So that's it. Powerful word. Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you. Last chance, guys. So thank you so I agree. much. Powerful words. Oh. Let's <laughs> agree to the powerful words <laughs> and confirmation to the tonight's um um perhaps I caught it halfway or somewhere there about but you know as you as you delivered I ran and went and pick up an old Bible uh, I used to to use and in about two thousand and two the preacher um, made a declaration that um in his message that I'm gonna get a car you know i'm gonna own a vehicle and i wrote it down in the bible and it felt like that word yes i'm good man every month every week i've been looking out for the car until the year finished and i didn't get the car but guess what um an opening came and the a car was being sold and i said yes i'm interested in the car and i mean there are several other persons who wanted it. Long and short of it, um, they told me, you know what, you can't get it. A few months after, I was called. They said, you know what, we still have the car, you know. Come for it. And at that point in time, I was able to come up with all the money. And I, I wrote the date. It was a year after. So it's just a kind of confirmation. Sometimes you receive a word from God, mm -hmm. and you may think that it is now. So just like when the prophet, he, he, he received the word and um, when going to, to check seven times, my little word to that, pray again. So you may have prayed about a situation or look for confirmation about something or have received a word to say, yes, this is going to be. Don't get discouraged at the first, second or third time. And as Brother Brown mentioned, that um, seven times could be a couple of years and so I've had the personal experience, different ways and form. But I've come to learn that um, when you hear the word, it, it, it could be within the minute, within the hour, and it could be within the year or within 10 years. But it's going to be right in time and on time for God's time. And powerful, powerful um, delivery and presentation tonight. Thank Bless you so you. much, Pastor. You're most welcome. And so I close out by saying, you could have been anywhere at doing anything, somewhere else just doing something, but you chose to be here. And I just want to say thank you so much for being on the platform. I really, really appreciate it. I am happy that you... <laughs> I don't know, guys. I'm just excited. I'm sorry. Excuse the laughing. I'm, I'm excited because I know God is taking us somewhere. And uh, I, I, just, I just know that the situations are about to start changing and turning and, and shifting. And the opportunities... And Natalie, sorry, just one thing. <clears throat> God, wait until the end of the story. To tell Elijah that there are 7,000 persons, a reserve 7,000 who have not um, basically bowed to Baal. Mm -hmm. He was not giving him all the information at the time. And so sometimes we are waiting for God to tell us everything before we move out. He wait until the end of all of this to say, Elijah, you're not alone. He was also testing Elijah to see if he had the courage just to believe, to think that this is difficult. This is hard. It's me alone. God, you know, understand me. That time God have people out there strategically, but he was not willing to share that information with Elijah. You need to trust me. So as you mentioned, God is going to shift. He's going to turn things around. 
oh God, but we can we are looking at our circumstances now and our situation, and it's like God is saying, don't look at it, just continue focusing on what I've told you to do. Thanks, sir. I'm excited to see what's next um, in the coming weeks. 2020. That's a prophetic been... word. That's a prophetic word, Natalie. And I, I support know. you with that. We are excited of what God is going to do in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. And I'm not saying that because I know of any plans. You, we have not spoken about anything. This is just the word of the Lord. That whatever the Lord is going to unfold and break us into in the next couple of months. Ah, oh God. We are ready and we are just prepared to support the move of the Lord. He's going to do something. Mm. And so, guys, I, I, I say to you that every strategic alliance that needs to happen will happen. That the alliances that needs to happen for the progression to take place will happen. The phone calls are going to come. The phone calls are going to come. The emails are going to come. Just position yourself for these strategic alliances and for the Lord to, Adonabosha, to use you the way he ought to use you. Thank you, Jesus. I just want you to receive those, these strategic alliances right now in your spirit. Just receive what the Lord is about to do. Hallelujah. Receive the doors that are being opened. Just receive it even now in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive. Just receive. Just receive. Just receive. Thank you, Jesus. Help is coming. For some of you, some of you are really in need of some help. Um, some will be financial help. Some will be um, consultative help, advice about how to progress and what's next and how to, to move into the next. Um, circles are being changed. God is really putting someone into a new circle. You've been asking the Lord to bring you amongst people who whose language are different to who and, and 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 it's happening it's 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 happening it's happening and i declare that no opportunity will be missed that we will all discern and and know when the opportunities have presented itself for us to display God, to stand for God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. The weight, the weight that is on your life, it, it, it that damn um, It's it's time for manifestation. Um. The ideas, some persons have been having additional ideas of starting small groups. Um, go ahead, says the Lord. Um, so maybe two or three persons, just, just whether it be mentorship or sharing, but you, you desire to start a small group, go ahead and start that group. God is going to, to cause that group to, to grow. God is going to cause that group to grow. Um, your voice is needed in this season, says God. Ah. Um, let's talk, family. I just want to say that God is doing something and he's speaking. And I know that some of us are going through challenges. But I just want to let you know, once again, Spirit of the Light says to tell you, be strategic about your life. 
He's deliberate about your life. 2020 is going to be an awesome year for most of you. For most of you, 2020 is going to be an awesome year. You're going to speak about it very differently. And the manifestations of the Lord is going to be very powerful in your life and over your life. And how you are going to operate in the realm of the spirit is going to be different and you're going to increase. The Lord says that you're going to increase in this season. You are going to increase in him. Your capacity is going to increase. And how you manifest in this season is going to be very different. And the manifestation is as a result of the increase. And so I just want to bless you guys tonight and say that let's just take over this earth for the Lord. <laughs> let's take over this earth for the Lord. And I close out tonight. That's how I close out all the nights. Try to take over the world. Same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. The Pinky and the Brain. Yes, Pinky and the Brain. Thank you, everyone. Blessings. Enjoy the rest of your night. Thank you so much for being on the platform with us. I hope you enjoyed yourself. And I see you again next week. Bye. Oh, big up yourself, Nuts. Bye. 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 Thank you.